Life's a game, the world's a stage, and we are merely role players, where theatrical people play role playing games. I'm Matt Boothman, and I'm your compere for this main house production. Here on Merely Role Players, we improvise stories for your entertainment and ours, and we use role playing games to keep the story going places even we can't see coming, because as theatrical people, we're all about maximising the drama. This episode is part of our current main house production, Vigil, Tourist Trap. In this production, we're playing Monster of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat. So please take your seats in the main house. Tonight's production is about to begin. Vigil a Merely Role Player's main house production. Tourist Trap, Act 2 of 5. I'm Helen Stratton and I play Melody, the Constructed. She owns Sherry Down's Cafe Come Record Shop and knows how to handle a tough customer. She's got a heart of gold, which just so happens to be second-hand. I'm Chris Buxy and I play Calisterius Softbinding, the expert. Calisterius, or Cal to his friends, is a noted horror writer living in Cherrydale. While researching his latest novel, he discovered that monsters were real. He also discovered that fighting monsters is an excellent way to procrastinate when he really should be writing. My name's Chris McLennan and I'm playing Ed Kincaid, the professional. He's a disgraced MI5 agent who's been kicked down to a basement to investigate reports of ghosts and little green men and other things that definitely don't exist. He just wants to file his report and go home. I'm Ellen, and I play Jess Butterworth, the spooky. Jess is a Sheridan local born and bred. She's not a girl, not yet a woman, and she's frustratingly and embarrassingly human excruciatingly normal. But there's so much more to Jess. She's so sure of it. A voice in the back of her mind keeps telling her she's bigger and better than this town and her parents' stupid gastropub and her stupid job at the stupid amazement park. And what with her big brother disappearing and weird stuff happening around the town? It's about time Jess showed Sheridan how badly it's underestimated her. It's the bloody bank. They say they've got no record of me as a as an account holder. He didn't click on a dodgy link, but he did go in a new shop. What's his card look like now? The card simply says first name, last name. The number is 12 zeros. All of my settings have gone. All of my sign-ins on all of my many social media platforms have gone. All of the identifying information has been drained to the other party in that transaction, centred pretty much on the amazement park. Well, I'm going there right now. Don't know about the rest of you. So is the amazement park walkable from Market Street or do you all have to pile in the car? I think it's just about if you had to walk, you could because Jess does it every day. But ideally, transport would be nice. So up to you, Kincaid. Are you letting everybody in the Morris Minor? Well, I think even if everybody else sort of turned left out the door to start schlepping, Kincaid definitely goes for the car. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's Kincaid's pride and joy. Uh, it's a 1968 Morris Minor Traveller in British racing green. It's got the nice sort of wood panelling on the sides. Many have told him it's not very becoming of a uh, a special agent, but uh, it's his car. God damn it! 
<laughs> so the the Morris Minor Traveller draws up into the car park of the Amazement Park. There's one other car in the car park. Sitting in the car is Jess's boss, Charlie Barlow, and he is crying. That's my boss. That's Charlie. What earth is he still doing here? Uh, he looks a bit upset, doesn't he? Do you think we should perhaps go and find out what's wrong? Uh, all right. I should probably go and talk to him. A voice in Jess's head says, May, fuck him. He's been making your life hell all day. Who cares if he's crying in his car? And those words really hit home with me. And I say to the others, No, you know what? You go and talk to him. I've talked to him all day and, and I've had enough. Uh, okay then. Uh, yes, I, I suppose we. I don't really know him, but um... I'll go and talk to him. Don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm going to march. I'm going to march ahead. And <laughs> before Cal's finished his sentence, I'm tapping on the glass. <laughs> Cage reaches backwards and pulls uh, a uh, blanket like more securely over the stuff in the boot. Charlie hears, jumps a little at the uh, at the knock on the window collects himself wipes his eyes uh he's a he's a pretty big guy uh his head is shaved and you can see he's got male pattern baldness going on he's quite red-faced he's often sort of outside walking uh walking between the rides at the amazement park looking at things uh so he's a he's a pretty sort of outdoors kind of guy dressed in a checked shirt and jeans and he winds down the window he sort of like goes halfway between winding down the window and opening the door and ends up talking to you through the half-opened window and says, Oh, uh, um, sorry, I'll, um, can I help you? Um, I was wondering the same thing. Uh, how you, how you doing? Oh, oh, you're, you're, you're Melody from the, from the, the record shop. Yeah, everyone knows me. I just thought I could see that you were maybe having a problem. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, as, uh, as one local business owner to another um i i don't know what i'm gonna do i've been on phone with bank all day and it's it's like i've never existed in their system and they've no record of me owning this place and i don't know how to i don't know what's going to happen and he break, starts breaking down again okay okay take a deep breath <gasps> i understand that um things aren't making a lot of sense I don't, um, I don't even like this place very much. <laughs> hmm. Well, the only thing that does make sense is that uh, we're not going to get anywhere if you're in a flap. So carry on with those deep breaths. And I'm going to look around at Cal and be like, trying to get him to evolve himself in the conversation in some way. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, yes, um... What, why is it that they don't have a, a record of you? What what did they say? What they've they've never heard of you, or did they give you any reason they don't have a record of you? Oh, it's hello. By the way, um, hi. I think roll investigate a mystery. Okay. See how much you can get out. <laughs> see how much useful info you can get out of him here. I was avoiding it because I'm blunt as anything. <laughs> um. So I have got uh, a total of ten. Nice. So you get two questions. It was the weirdest thing. Eventually, I managed to get through to somebody who I'd actually spoken to before, uh, who's handled some of the billing before, and she knew me. She recognised my voice. She recognised my name. She she remembered dealing with the account before, but she couldn't find any of it in system. She said it. She remembers it, but it looked like it were it were like there was never any account set up in my name. Well, did, I mean, did she say uh, she? You say she remembered you, um, but she couldn't find your account. Did she say what happened to your account? Did she say where the data went? I mean, if they had like, did she say if they've had like a systems crash or uh, was the data copied somewhere else? Did she give you any clues? She, she she did a lot of digging while well, we were on the phone with her nearly all day um, and it took her a while but she did manage to she uh, she found some paper records uh, to prove that I, I 
really had had a, an account and um she she managed to trace it to a particular time uh she gave me a, a window of of when it when it must all have disappeared and i i've been racking my brains trying to work out what might have happened in that window and the only thing i could think were it were this saturday afternoon um and that was when i were i were out doing me doing my shopping on the high street so the only thing i can think is that one of the shops i went into there must have, or, or the or the cash point must have skimmed do done, done one of those skim scams perhaps and then i got hacked from that oh, i see i went in the little waitrose for a sandwich and mm-hmm. i went in the i went in the greasy spoon for a cuppa uh and and i popped in that new uh that new souvenir place just to say hello and as a fellow local business owner to welcome them to the neighborhood so that's all i could think is that it might be one of them th- them three places hmm. very interesting uh, did you um did you buy something at all of those places oh i what did i get at the souvenir place a little uh, little little red phone box keychain ah do you have it on you can i see it no i lost it lost it at work the next day Oh dear! Well, not having much luck, are you today? We we've seen uh, uh, some other people having sort of uh, payment issues and uh, issues with their bank and stuff. It seems to be a lot of it going around. You think it's organised? It's somebody's attacking everybody in town. It could be that, but just for the moment, you're not on your own, and um, we're going to do our best to find out what's going on. I'll be going back to all those shops in the morning. To give him a piece of my mind, I'll tell you that. Okay, and I'm just going to pat him on the shoulder. I want to ask Jess where she was on Saturday afternoon without just turning my back on <laughs> on Charlie. So I'm standing at a distance with my arms crossed, listening in but not taking part in the conversation. Yeah, I, get, I was sort of picturing you and Ed just sort of grumpily eavesdropping. Well, I think Ed's just sort of leaning on the car, having a cigarette. He is eavesdropping. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to bounce over to Jess and be like, did you hear that? Where were you, where were you on Saturday afternoon? Why? Don't be silly now. I was at work, wasn't I? Where am I always on a Saturday afternoon? Were you in the pub? Were you here? I was here. Okay. Uh, you didn't um, pop into town at all lunchtime? On your way home? Uh, Saturday. Uh, well, I was at work. I was doing the tarot readings. I mean, I spent some money for lunch because my normal sandwiches, I forgot to put them in my bag. And there was this new pop-up stall thing out in the yard at Amazement Park. Uh, it was just doing, like, vegan wraps and, like, piri piri something it was kind of naff though and really overpriced but i i i used my my pay thing on my tablet there which i'd never done before okay what you think that's got something to do with it i haven't a clue i'm not used to investigating these things it's it's not my job to investigate unlike someone who might be leaning on their car and listening I think uh, that I sort of stop leaning car and just sidle slowly over towards wherever Cal is. So I'm still over uh, comforting the uh, the other guy. Charlie's pulled himself together by this point and is is getting ready to getting ready to drive off and go home. Aww. Okay. Well, you know, don't worry. I mean, it sounds like uh, the, the bank realised there's an error. And, you know, I'm sure they've got system backups. Well, once they start getting reports from, you know, so many people uh, all from this town, they're going to realise, you know, the fault doesn't lie with us. It's obviously their systems. So, uh, you know, I'm sure they'll be able to sort it out. Why don't you go home and get a good night's sleep and everything will look better in the morning? I, uh, I, I'll do that. Thank you. Um, uh, oh, that's all right. You, the, the the park's closed by the way it is it is the evening now so oh, is it? i don't know what oh, okay. i don't know i'm glad i'm happy that you were here uh to to in my hour of need but i'm I'm just not sure why but uh just so you know oh we thought sorry we thought it was one of the late night opening days uh, is that not today oh no that's that's thursdays fridays 
Well, never mind. We'll come back another day. But I'm glad we could help you out. Have a safe drive. <laughs> I just feel like Cal doesn't look like their typical clientele either. <laughs> this is such a weird exchange. Well done. <laughs> Charlie drives away. The park is closed, but Jess is perfectly capable of getting you all in if that's what you want to do. Just want to ask Cal briefly. Soft binding, not uh, not your real name, right? Uh, it's not. No, no, it's my pen name. What name do you hold your accounts in? They they are all set up uh, in the name of my business, which is uh, Soft Binding Holdings. And uh. That name still on the cards, still on your uh, online account. I'll uh, I'll take out my card and have a look. Uh, yep, all still seems to be there. And have you used this in the last couple days? I guess I I haven't. No. Guess that doesn't answer much then. Is that is that your best investigating? Is it? Is that is, are you done asking questions? Well, I. Uh, didn't really want you to include me in the first place but there you go you didn't have to come well i i think it's clear that we all have to take some sort of action i mean I, I, soft binding holdings may be safe for the moment but who's to say how long that lasts you know and a lot of people bought uh, copies of my book tonight and i don't want to have wasted all that time with uh, all my money disappearing so what do we think? Should we, as we're here, should we go and have a quick look around the park? I mean, it, it, it sounds like uh, your boss, Jess, sounds like uh, he may have encountered whatever this problem was in on the high street. But then again, it looked like you encountered the problem here. So... Well, seeing as we're here... I think we should try a soft binding holdings uh, card in the food truck. Uh, well, I mean, it, it might not be open. <laughs> I mean, I don't see why that's going to be a problem. Jess, you've got keys to most of the place, right? No, I can get a way into most places around here. I'm happy to take us over the last hurdle if you can get us to the, into the truck. All right. It has to be Cal's card, though. It has to be Cal's uh, card. I must say, I'm slightly worried uh, about... Uh, I don't really want to lose my digital self. I have a lot of subscribers to my mailing list. Look... Cal, you're the one who told me that there's something powerful in her name. Now, I don't really buy it, but if I use my card, I reckon it winds up the same as everyone else's. If you use your card, I reckon it doesn't. Oh, very well then, yes. All right, I, we really do need to get to the bottom of this. Uh, okay, I'll uh, I'll step up. Let's see if we can get into the food truck. It'll only be a couple of quid or something. If you buy it. Oh, no, it was overpriced. It'll only be like 7 or 8.50 for a small wrap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure I can stretch to that. Right, uh, let's go then. Right, follow me. Sheridan is twinned with Waterdeep, city of splendours. Right now in Waterdeep, the great game is afoot. Plan your trip to this bustling metropolis now, and you could be in with a chance to grab the biggest hoard of gold ever gathered in all the realms. Sheridan Town Council does not recommend planning an actual trip to bustling Waterdeep during the Great Game. The Great Game has a high mortality rate, and anyone visiting Waterdeep during this season does so at their own risk. As a, a, um, a safe alternative, the Council recommends becoming a patron of our town's favourite Great Game contestants, the Waterdeep Mall Rats. Your support could mean everything to these plucky heroes of the Dock Ward. Literally, your influence could mean the difference between rescue and betrayal, between a daring heist succeeding or failing, between the Mall Rats winning the prize, or losing everything. Enjoy the beautiful but dangerous City of Waterdeep from a safe distance. Mondays at 7pm UTC plus 1 on twitch.tv slash sabotage the DM. Hello everyone and welcome to the Waterdeep Mall Rats Dragon Heist podcast. And as she's like 
crossing over she's like pulling out an empty jar just like e- yes i want you <laughs> i want to study you so hard this audio is taken directly from our live stream which you can see on twitch.tv forward slash sabotage the dm on mondays at 7 p.m in the uk or 11 a.m pacific standard time you know what we used to do when we were fighting and we were scared we used to smoke here you go <laughs> out of that taste Our adventure will be played by a cast of immersive actors. Dan Berman, Pups the Goblin Monk. Gabrielle McPherson, Oshi Sota, the Yuanti Pureblood Rogue. Rob Thompson, Big Fatch, the Warforged Barbarian. And Evie James, Baggy, the Half-Orc Artificer. She's going to try and steal it all off the table as much as she can get. (laughs) And then run, okay? Towards Ship Street. Ready? Oh, she's pissed. We will join our adventurers as they move from their homes on Black Star Lane in the Dock Ward and attempt to climb into the higher echelons of Waterdeep society to join what is known as the Great Game or the Neverember Enigma. In search of hundreds of thousands of stolen gold coins hidden somewhere in the city. Oh, I don't know. Why, what is it with pups and shit, man? <laughs> <laughs> All right, lovies. It's me, Matt, your compere, checking and double-checking the actors' riders here in the interval. If you do end up heading to Twitch and checking out Sabotage the DM, the fine folks from that trailer just now, you can still check out some guest appearances by merely roleplayers people in their videos section. If you check your program, i.e. the notes for this episode, you'll find links to replay the Rebel Roleplayers Roundtable, featuring Ellie and Alexander Pankhurst, and a game of Dead of Night featuring Alex and Natalie Winter, where possessed geese crash an island wedding. Or, if you can get to London and you'd like to see some of us in glorious lifelike 3D, tickets are now on sale for Trouble at Sea, a Miss McSkimming mystery. Trouble at Sea is a Blackshaw Theatre Company production for the Wandsworth Fringe Festival, written by Strat and starring Natalie Winter, Chris Starkey, Alexander Pankhurst, Josh Yard, Ellie Pitkin, and Strat himself. The play is a pip-pip vintage mystery adventure with a big twist. The mystery takes place on a boat at sea, so victims and perpetrators alike fall under the auspices of maritime law. We know even less about the sea than we do about Mars, probably. So who's to say what's legal or moral out there on the waves? The show's being staged as radio theatre, so cast at mic stands, emphasis on vocal rather than physical performances, that kind of format. But you're going to want to be there on the day if you can, because then you get to see how the Foley team creates all the weird and wonderful sound effects. That day is the Saturday the 3rd of July at 1pm in the Big Top in St George's Park, Wandsworth. I'm not involved in the production itself except for helping set up on the day, but I am part of a writing workshop that Blackshaw's offering alongside it. It's free and open to Wandsworth residents. We'll be covering the basics of how to make words go out of brain and onto screen, and the rest is going to be tailored around what applicants tell us they want help with. The link to sign up is in the programme, along with the link to get tickets for the show itself. Now that we've all got that to look forward to, please take your seats once again in the main house, as we continue Vigil, Tourist Trap, Act 2 of 5. and I lead everyone to the corner and there's a gate with a padlock, but I jimmy around on the side of it, lift a latch and it swings in. And what is Amazement Park like at night? Really creepy. And in the day? <laughs> really, really, really creepy. You can see the details. There's a, there's a sign over the gate that you head through that says, Amazement Park, the happiest place on earth. Somehow <laughs> they haven't been sued yet. Uh, and I think a lot of the attractions and rides are similarly bootleg copies of famous things from other theme parks. Yep. So it's a bit like a really, really, really low budget Blackpool. 
there's one of those rides that drops you from a height there's uh there's a there's a small roller coaster but i think it probably makes most of its money from like like shoot the target throw hoops over the balloon kind of stalls oh yeah there's plenty of those there's even there's a a stall that will do a wax cast of your hand for you in which they have molten pots of wax and kids come along and they plunge their hands into the molten pots of wax this comes from a true experience of mine at dreamland margate (laughs) (laughs) and of course we know that it has a tarot tent where jess can often be found during working hours but there is also a, a, a wide open courtyard sort of area where the food trucks set up um, and many of them have gone home for the day, but that one that Jess remembers is one of the ones that is still set up there. Are there any woobly mirrors? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Kincaid is like, like eagle-eyed looking up woobly mirrors. Like he's, this is his, this is his theory. He's got a one-track mind. <laughs> Can I just check? Are there are there people still at the the stall closing up? No. The whole place is deserted. You're the only people here. Right, okay. Right, so it was this one. I mean, it's only been here, like, I don't know, a few days at most. Like, I saw it on Saturday for the first time. I thought I'd try it, but... Yeah, it's this one. I had, like, a spicy tofu wrap, but it tasted nothing. So this is the only place I can think of that I I did anything that I don't normally do. Um, what were the people like who served you? Grumpy. Hostile, if anything. My kind of people. (laughs) (laughs) Can we get into the stall, or is it, like, fully shut up? It's fully shut up, but I'm sure you can find a way. All right, I'll give it a snooping. Nice. So Investigating Mystery is plus... It's plus sharp, sharp. yep. It's not great, seven. Okay, hold one. What would you like to try and find out? Let's go. What what is being concealed here? So, by whatever means you manage to make your way into this food truck, I think he I think he jackboot it. I think he's yeah. Kincaid doesn't want to be here. Just wants to do everything yeah. as fast as possible. Okay, so you kick your way into the food truck, and to Kincaid's professional experience and and senses, something's off about the about the truck right from the start. And as you sort of start to investigate the place and sort of maybe shine a phone torch around and start to like try doorknobs and drawers and that sort of thing, you realize it's it's almost like a stage set. None of the cupboards open. None of the drawers open. The cash register doesn't open. None of the buttons on it work. It has a card reader next to it. None of the buttons on the card reader do anything. None of the material feels quite right either. All of the, what looks like metal of the drawer handles and doorknobs is slightly warmer than it ought to be. And as you poke at some of the buttons on the cash register, they're slightly yielding, ever so slightly soft and spongy. I turn to Jess and go, so did they give you the wrap? Yeah. I don't know if that's worth better or worse, really. <laughs> oh, in fact, another detail. Embedded in the middle of the floor of the food truck, which is otherwise kind of a, a lino pattern, in the middle of the floor is what looks like a 2D image of a little red phone box. Hang on. Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that the key ring that Charlie was talking about? That stupid little red phone box thing? Like a picture of it on the floor. It does seem to match the description he gave us. I, I wonder if we can prize that out at all. Has anyone got any tools? I have a sledgehammer. Perfect. I think we, I think we should try mine later. I was going to say, I've, I've got things that might move it, but I don't, I don't think they're the <laughs> standard first recourse. I can pull out the knife I've got from my, my parents' kitchen and go to one knee and start carefully trying to prise around it. But while I'm down there, while I'm down there, talking Jess's voice all the time now, <laughs> while I'm down there, everything kind of fades away a bit and I notice Kit kneeling next to me. 
and I kind of pause and I lock eyes with him and I inside my own head say look Kit thanks for earlier for you know you know making me stand my ground with my dad and and my like, boss you know I, I thank you for that but, um, mate anything for you we're we're a team we're partners I've always got your back I know um but what can't we see here like this doesn't make any sense. This is a picture of something that Charlie said he bought as a key ring. I don't think I'm going to be able to cut it out. Do you want to try and... This feels, I can feel through you touching it. This feels like spongy, like it's, like it's alive. Right. Like it's made of living stuff. Do you, want to, do you want to see if we can try and get in its head? That's what I was see thinking. See if it's got one. Can you do that, Kit? I can give it a go. Oh, go on. With your help. Thanks. Uh, this sounds like tune in. Yeah. I roll. Oh my. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Plus weird, which is two. So, thirteen. Kit closes their eyes and puts an insubstantial hand on Jess's forehead and puts another hand on the floor of the food truck and you see their hand meld into the floor and you feel through the hand on your forehead a consciousness that isn't yours or Kit's mm. and it's not a particularly intelligent consciousness it feels quite simple, quite animalistic like it has okay. quite simple needs wants it feels hungry it, is, it feels itself growing so what would you like to tune in and discover from it I would like to discover whether this is the whole of the creature or being or an offshoot of something bigger yeah so Roughly, where is the cre creature right now? Yeah, yeah. You feel behind that consciousness a larger, more solid, more established one. The one you're directly connected to seems to be separate from it, but connected to it. And the, the simple kind of animal message you get from this one that you're connected to right here in the food truck... Uh, its attitude towards the larger one behind is mother. Mm. There is a sort of uh, like a psychic image, an abstract image of uh, in a black void, a white spongy form, roughly roughly globular, and a bud buds off it and takes the shape of a little key ring in the shape of a red phone <gasps> box. Oh wow. And okay. then you see that grow into this food truck. Kit, Kit, can you can you reach that that thing in the middle of all of this? The bigger one? Yeah, the bigger one. I can give it a bloody good try. Oh would you? Okay, I'm going deeper. Can you sense Kit, can you feel what's it planning? What does it want? It wants to it wants to grow and it wants to spread and to do that it's got to eat and it's it's eaten it's eaten plenty already it's eaten enough to establish itself in its nest that it's in it's eaten enough to start budding and sporing and and spreading so what it wants now it wants to feed more for a final growth spurt to find a new nest that's bigger where it can it can get even more people to spread it around oh bloody hell can, can you see who's it going to go for who's that last meal it it doesn't have any thoughts about that it it knows that whatever it needs is going to come to it it's a it's, it's like a... What's one of those plants? 
that the, the flies come to and they fall in and they drown and it eats them. Oh yeah, being a spy trap. I had one of those when I was 13. It's like that, but for people. Right. I bet it's that shot. Thank you so much, Kit. And I'm going to sort of pull myself back. I haven't made an incision in the floor at all. Everything's very dizzy. And I take a moment to, like, ground myself. And I, I'm going to sort of avoid Melody's eye contact when I say all this, because I haven't really talked to her about everything that's been going on with me. Look, don't ask me how, but I know that this is just like a bud. It's not the main plant. Like, there's a big thing, and it's it's feeding off people's data and information, and it's getting bigger and bigger, and, and this is just like a facade so that it can eat more. And I reckon that shop on the high street that's that's our main problem that's everyone's just buying tat from that place and and it's and it's sucking the life out of them all right kid just just one question what what in god's name are you talking about (laughs) oh for crying out loud ed two things happen first of all cal i want to pay something off because you asked earlier while investigating a mystery what kind of creature is it and you got it down to like a ballpark of the kind of creature, but didn't get a very specific answer from that, even though you got a success. So now that you have a bit more information, I just want to give Cal a realization of narrowing that down a little more. Great. This is basically a gingerbread house, in fairy tale terms anyway. Cool. So the Hansel and Gretel gingerbread house, the fairy tale includes a witch who owned the house. But the running theory among Department of Omissions folks and generally people in the know is that this is actually a a kind of entity that takes over a space and makes it seem homely and tempts people in to consume them in some fashion. Right, okay. Do I have time to communicate that to people? before the second thing happens? Probably not in this moment. (laughs) Because the second thing that happens is you all hear from the far end of the food truck where the cash register is. Would you like to take your complaint to the manager? Mm -hmm. And now there there is a figure standing by the till that was not there before. I think Kincaid's guns out already. (laughs) The figure looks human and is facing across the counter, basically facing the closed shutter of the food truck. (gasps) Creepy. You can just see this in silhouette from the light coming in through the door that Kincaid kicked down. Okay, buddy, a hand where I can see him. Uh, This person is between us and the door, you see? No. You've come in one end of the food truck. Jess is in the middle of the floor of the food truck, one hand on the floor, and beyond Jess, at the far end of the food truck where the cash register is, is this figure. They don't move in response to Kincaid's yell or Kincaid pulling his gun. Just repeats. If you have a complaint, would you like to take it to the manager? Uh, no, I don't think we would at this time. Uh, I think we just like to back out of here very slowly. And I start doing that. If anybody would like to, this is a situation where you could roll to read a bad situation. I will I will read this bad situation with my super cool plus three. Yes, it's normally a roll plus sharp, but for Kincaid this is plus cool because Kincaid is a tactical genius. Eleven. Nice. Hold three and ask three questions off read a bad situation. Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? As you look between the sights of your service pistol at this figure, you see a change and movement in the far wall of the food truck. Like the opposite end? The opposite end, the end where this figure is standing. The material of the interior of the food truck at that end, the shadowed end, is morphing 
and there is movement from the ceiling and from the floor and from the wall uh, and you can see the glimmer of sharp points in its shape what's most vulnerable to me the entire inside of the food truck is sort of made of the same stuff your read on the situation is that like shooting the figure in the head would be equally as effective as shooting one of the cupboard doors like it's all the same stuff the one thing that you do you have clocked is that this figure appeared once jess started investigating the like the seed the little key ring embedded in the floor and so maybe there might be something in that what's the best way to get everyone out make me last if necessary <laughs> it looks like at this point you could just barrel out the door there's nothing stopping you leaving everybody out now i agree jess is still slightly woozy on the floor having kind of projected herself through kit so i think i would gather jess in that case and usher physically maybe under the arms situation so i've got one arm round melody and we're we're staggering and i lean on the wall as we go don't do that i shoot on the way out that's fine <laughs> <laughs> jess the wall is tacky it's sticky like flypaper and you all feel this as you're running out you feel this on the soles of your shoes as well the material of the insides of the food truck is sucking at you I go, I rip my hand off Ugh. let's go let's not hang around once i'm happy that everyone else is out i will back still shooting out of the door i presume i presume i've taken out thing that resembles man first then just shot it with more but i would quite like to just take a uh carefully with my last possible opportunity carefully aimed shot at the key ringy thing the the nucleus all right roll plus tough this is kicking some ass uh that is an eight you hit the little phone box key ring in the middle of the floor and it cracks and at the same time the sharp point the sharp moving points that you've seen on the far end of the wall ripple across the ceiling and like unfurl from the ceiling and the the word that comes to mind is not teeth it's more mouth parts Ugh. and they rake across the uh, the top of one of your shoulders uh for one harm one harm i'm imagining like a lamprey something like that Ugh. a grotesque swimming sea of teeth <sighs> You unload shots into the humanoid-looking appendage, and it just doesn't move as the bullets blast chunks out of it. You unload into some of the mouth parts, and again, they sort of blast apart, but more of them appear. But the, the seed, the phone box in the middle of the floor, seems permanently damaged, broken. And as this, uh, as this mandible digs into your shoulder you can feel the floor release your feet and the substance of the inside of the food truck starts to wobble and melt yeah i think while it's in me i would empty what's left of a clip and then get out of there that's how he solves problems when he finally admits he uh, has encountered one the shots ring out uh, around the this I guess adventure uh, amazement park is kind of outskirts of town uh, so there's not too many people around to hear it uh, but still the park echoes with the gunshots has been Vigil, a main house production from Merely Role Players. It stars Ellen Gould as Jess Butterworth, Chris McLennan as Ed Kincaid, Helen Stratton as Melody, and Chris Buxy as Calisteria Softbinding. Sound design for this production is by Natalie Winter, and the theme music is by Alexander Pankhurst. 
I'm Matt Boothman, and I play the supporting cast, as well as editing and producing the episode. We were playing Monster of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat Productions. You can find Monster of the Week at genericgames.co.nz. Merely Roleplayers is a Foggy Outline production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Until next time, if drama be the food of life, play on. Did you say on Monday? Is the amazement park closed at weekends? <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> it's closed it's, on weekends. It's midweek at the moment. Like, <laughs> Jess doesn't have to work there every day. <laughs> I just love the idea that it's closed at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant.